Why does heat cause objects to move? Why do pendulums swing? And why does chocolate cake give you a sugar rush? Welcome to the world of energy. <laughs> Energy is, put simply, having the ability to change or move things. It's measured in joules and can be stored in many different forms. There's kinetic, thermal, light, gravitational potential, chemical, sound, electrical, elastic potential and, well, nuclear. Energy can also be transferred between different stores in different ways. Either mechanically, when a force moves an object over a distance, electrically, when charges in a circuit move because a voltage is induced, by heating, or by radiation, when the energy is transferred as a wave. For instance, when I run across the garden, the chemical energy in my body is mechanically converted to kinetic energy causing me to speed up. When I turn on this circuit, the chemical energy stored in the battery is electrically converted to electrical energy, which is then also electrically converted to light energy in the bulb. But energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred between different stores. If I release this pendulum from my chin, the gravitational potential energy stored is converted to kinetic energy as it speeds up and then back to gravitational potential as it slows down at the other side. And according to the conservation of energy, it should come straight back to where it started. Work done is a fancy way to say the amount of energy transferred. An equation to describe the total energy transferred during a mechanical transfer is the work done or the energy transferred is equal to the force applied on an object multiplied by the distance moved by that object. For instance, when I push this box across the garden, I exert a force on the box and move it a certain distance, and so therefore I transfer the chemical energy in my body to the kinetic energy in the box, causing it to move. Using the equation, if I exerted 10 newtons of force on the box across 5 metres, I would have transferred 50 joules of energy to the box. And if there were no other frictional forces acting against the motion of the box from the ground and the air, it would continue to move once I stopped pushing it. Check out our video on forces if this doesn't make sense. Kinetic energy, the energy of moving objects, and gravitational potential energy, the energy of objects above the ground, are highly interchangeable. The kinetic energy of an object is equal to half times its mass times its speed squared. If we increase the speed or the mass of a moving object, its kinetic energy increases. So a high-speed airplane has much more kinetic energy than a snail. The gravitational potential energy of an object is equal to its mass times the gravitational field strength, approximately 9.81 meters per second squared on Earth, times the vertical height gained by an object. In fact, this equation is very similar to the energy transferred equals force applied times distance moved equation. The force required to lift an object is equal to its weight, which equals the object's mass times the gravitational field strength and the distance moved is simply the height gained. If we increase the mass or the height of an object above the ground, its gravitational potential energy increases. So if I stand here, I have almost no gravitational potential energy. When I stand here, I have more gravitational potential energy. And when I stand up here, I have even more gravitational potential energy than before. Before I drop this ball, it starts off with a high amount of gravitational potential energy, but no kinetic energy because it's not moving. But as I release it, its gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy 
and so its speed increases, while its gravitational potential energy decreases because its height above the ground decreases. When it reaches the ground, almost all of its energy is converted to kinetic energy, reaching its maximum speed. But once it bounces off the ground, some of its kinetic energy is converted back to gravitational potential energy as its height increases, causing the ball to slow down. This same principle is used in swings and even roller coasters. But if energy is conserved, why doesn't the ball bounce back up to where it started? That's because some of the energy is lost to the surroundings. Some is converted to sound energy, which of course you can hear, while some is also converted to thermal energy, either via friction between air particles as it falls or when it hits the ground. Power is the rate at which energy is transferred and is measured in watts. In other words, if a crane pulls a box up and transfers 10 joules of energy to it, as gravitational potential energy, in 10 seconds, while another crane also transfers 10 joules of energy to another box, but in only five seconds, the second crane has a higher power because it has transferred the same amount of energy, but faster. As an equation, power is equal to the total energy transferred divided by the time taken to transfer that energy. However, most energy transfers don't always transfer energy to only the form that we need. For instance, if I turn on this light here, the electrical energy is partly converted to light energy, which is what we want. But the other part is mostly converted to thermal energy, which is not what we want. And this explains why lights can often feel warm or even hot to touch. This is known as the efficiency of a transfer, which equals as a percentage, the useful energy outputted divided by the total energy inputted, all multiplied by 100 to convert it to a percentage. In this instance, the light energy is the useful energy outputted, while the electrical energy is the total energy inputted, while the thermal energy is wasted. LEDs have an efficiency of around 90%, converting 90% of the total energy transferred to light energy, whereas incandescent bulbs only have around 10% efficiency, not very efficient at all. If you want to save electricity bills, buying LED lights may be a good idea. So, back to the questions I posed at the start. Why does heat cause objects to move? If you heat a pot of water, for instance, the thermal energy from the flame is transferred to the kinetic energy stores in the water particles, which causes them to move faster. As you heat them more and transfer more kinetic energy to them, they start moving even faster until eventually they have enough energy to break apart from each other and separate out to form steam. And why does chocolate cake give us a sugar rush? Or, in other words, how does food give us energy? Food and drinks contain chemical energy, and when we eat or drink something, the body uses substances called acids and enzymes that break down the food into a substance called glucose. The glucose then enters our bloodstream and is transported to all the parts in our body, muscles, organs, etc., providing them with chemical energy. When we walk, talk, exercise, or even think, we transfer this energy into other stores, which is why many people exercise to try to lose weight. In fact, the number of calories or kilojoules that a piece of food or drink contains is simply how much chemical energy is stored inside of it. So chocolate cake contains way more energy than low calorie meals. Before you go, be sure to check out our worksheets and more at worktexample.xyz. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay safe.